So like Kibe, he's below me. There's nothing that Kibe has that I don't have tenfold. There's nothing he has better than me. Probably YouTube subscribers because a lot of people like pettiness and insults because creativity, zero. All he does is insult people. Uh, his face, he's uglier than I am. You see? I don't have any business talking to that lady. We have nothing to discuss. She's not my friend, she's not my mate, she's not my fan, nothing. So Tim Kyoko, Podaku Waitaki Uzembe. Uko mali ya kuna Wi-Fi na una una credit ya kubai bundles ya kwa mpesa yako. Pay bill ni 936936. Account number ni namba yako. Kumbuka ni All Networks, Airtel, Telkom, Safaricom. Ile kitu pona jo ni nini? Bro, ikiwa una pesa kwa mpesa, usitens, unafuliza mtu wangu. Unafuliza una buy credit, una buy bundles, una watch video zangu zote. Pay bill 936936 account number ni namba yako ya simu Nicholas Kiyoko Kijana wa Uzongo Nicholas Kiyoko ile kipindi mm. A lot more is coming back Inakuwa jo tuongo nguvu mimi naitwa presenter Ali your entertainment PA and by the way the A is always for amazing tuko JKIA airport na tumepatana na Oga Obina mwenyewe uh, na sijua kwamba ama nafahamu kwamba umetokea maeneo ya Eldoret Eldoret and of course kuna vitu vingi ambavyo vinaendelea na tumeisi kwamba ni poa tumtafute tupige na story kidogo because PA naisi kwamba this entertainment industry ina muhusu inakuwa je bro I'm good niko fresh barida niko <laughs> fresh barida I'll see you <laughs> <laughs> Nile Dorret ni flight imekuwaje? The flight was was bumpy when you were landing mm -hmm. and you know I don't like flying so I was praying a million and one prayers but we are here. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, probably for, probably for people who don't know me talk Eldoret kufanya nini. Okay, I was in Eldoret for Kitenge festival. It was the biggest festival happens in uh, Eldoret annually. So this was a 2022 edition. Had the band were performing, MC Nick, MC Keep the Boots, Nebo was over there, DJ Tibbs from Heat Republic. It was a Rupa's Mall. It was amazing. Sold out. I've had so much fun. Eldoret, guys, thank you so much. You guys have given me so much love. Like, when I got on stage and the guys were screaming, first of all, I thought, Kwani wanna scream here at the band? <laughs> it's, it's Obina, relax. <laughs> Just any <hang it> down. <laughs> yeah, I was even lost in Nikki Dog. I was like, wait a minute, hold up. I'm like, oh, oh, it's me, yeah. So, Eldoret know how to party. I slept at 8am today morning. Yes, macho zangu kuna venyeziko kidogo. Yes, and then now I'm going to Claret Lounge for the Mashuja, uh, no Mashuja, Labor, Labor Day. Yeah, Labor, Labor Day, Day special. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, talking of Kitenge Festival, what is it all about? It's about fashion, celebrating fashion. You know, African, uh, Kitenge is associated by Africans most of the time because Africans are mejoko piga luku. So that is why Kitenge Festival happens that way. So it's all about fashion, designers, uh, creatives. We have uh, models as well. And then there's music mm -hmm. and happiness. That's all it's all about. Okay, before we even get to what you're supposed to talk about today, we tufungulia miwani hivo katuonyesha macho, nika kumuka incident fulani me happen. Juzi mkiwa na kido. There's that video, mlifanya mkiwa na kido, and the fans were really angry at you. Wakasema uko na kiburi, unge muongele shaivo, unge muambia tui na good way. What can you say about that video? Ulisema umechoka, you cannot do the interview at that particular moment. Okay, so I know kido for a while. He's my boy. That day when he came to do the interview, that day was one of those days. And I told him, bro, I don't want to do the interview. And he kept on insisting. Tell us, what do you think of it? What did he do? I didn't, I was not rude to him. Trust me, I wasn't. I know myself when I'm on the edge. I spoke with him, I told him, bro, I respect what you do. I don't want to do the interview. And he kept on insisting. So the only way was I would roll the window up and mind my business. Mm -hmm. Mulamo was standing there. Interview him. He wanted the interview. I didn't have an agenda to sell. Me, I was there to support Tumbili. And the event went well. Uh, that's what happened. It was nothing major the way they made it. If someone thinks I was rude to him, it's okay. You know, in, in, in art or in the industry, however you decide to consume content or information, you have, is entirely up to the consumer. Like today, I would cough, the someone would say, he has COVID. I would cough another person and say, he doesn't have manners, why did he not close this, da-da-da. So however you decide to consume it, it's entirely up to you. I can't control that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
right now while you are away okay. <laughs> a lot of stuff have, act have actually happened mm -hmm. and yeah, today kwanza tuanze na drama ya leo sijui kama umeiona Eric Mondi amepigwa ngumi na harmonize Eric Mondi is your body <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think Eric Omodi deserved that punch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, even if it's me, I'll punch it. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. So, what happened was, uh, I was to host the, the Captain's Lounge yeah. event. Yeah. We didn't agree on the payment terms. I was called by an agent of the club. was like, oh, we want you to do this, this, this. I was like, okay, this is my budget. We didn't agree. I was told, oh, you know, they're saying they've spent so much money on Harmonize. I'm like, oh... So, I come at my expense because you spend so much money on another artist, so myself, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do it. See God, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if I went there, probably those tear gas see me now. I can't hide. When I stand in the middle of people, guys, that's him. So, probably I could have been the one who was punched. You see that police who chased Kido again? You just see Kido wanted to interview that police. If <laughs> Kido could have just... Okay, even that police could have told Kido, like I said, I'm not in the mood for an interview. He even just came to, now the police wanted to interview Kido. <laughs> so, I could have been the one, Mwenye and Yakula Tiagas and all that drama, because when he came, I understand he did not perform. Probably he thought his club appearance, because Labda Eric Alifanya, that's something, you know? So, if I was there, it could have been me. But thank God, that day God told me, my brother, please go, leave. And we didn't agree, and... Uh, what the police did was not nice, though. But I think it's because the crowd was rowdy. They wanted what they had paid for, and that's why they were agitated and everything happened. Yeah. Yes, and then the, today, the story for the punching. <laughs> Kenyans, uh, so many, I think the huge percentage of Kenyans, they tend to say that this story is a story. But when you say when you understand kipindi in a story of kweli, do you think it's a real story or it's a script? Okay, first of all, I, I, was, I was in Eldoret, I was sleeping, so I woke up, I'm seeing everything, I'm like, okay. So I see Eric's mouth, I'm like, oh, so he's been punched. Then I see him on the plane, then I'm like, what happened to the, to the red, whatever, he was like bleeding. Then they are sitting there, yo, yo, I'm like, okay. They sit there with Bajoresa. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. And then if you go to Google now, and Google Kipindi, <laughs> you probably see a picture of Eric Omondi over there, bare chest. So, I don't know. But uh, the Captain Lounge story, that one definitely was not keeping the... Uh, I want a budget to call the police. What are you Yeah. Okay. Then the story for the Kokoriko story, probably. Uh, the story for the Nini. Hmm. To find Evi. To turn the volume. To pig <laughs> let, me, let me just ask something. One of the things Ambazo Umezungumzia is the fact that Captain Lo Captain's Lounge were unable to fix a budget. Yako. Yes. Sai Obina Kufanya show, uh, uh, let's say appearance and performance kwa show, ku MC and everything. Sai budget I, I can't tell because I, I, I do have a red card. Yes. However, uh, people are normally paid, and you are not paid what you are worth, you're paid what you bargain for. Because most of the time I've realized that when you have the red card and you present it to someone, people who don't know me normally pay me with my red card. People who know me, oh, you know, bro, <laughs> like your friends will never pay your red card. They're the ones who say, oh, Wina, oh, Wina wants to charge you how much? Watch an MPG. Bro, there's a friend of mine who's doing something small, just pass by. So most of the time you're not paid by the red card because uh, of different factors. One, someone can show me at you. Two, Economic card time. Sometimes we make a red card up on deal. Me, I want half a million to do this and this. And then someone's like, uh, then landlord is also looking at me like, oh, they're like, ah, but I need 50. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to food. Let me pull up. Yeah, so it depends. So I, I wouldn't really want to say my red card because the minute also you say that your channel is big, your channel is big, Kyoko's channel is big, and the people who watch have different opinions. Of the comment section, you'll just see. Ah, anajiringa. Ah, da, 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 da. Ah. People tend to consume content differently. So I don't want to put it there. They say, oh, he's feeling himself. Da, 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 da. But trust me, I'm not cheap. I was, but where I'm going now, <laughs> if you see me somewhere. No, it's, it's a journey. You have to start with the drinks. 
upewe food, upatiwe 200 bob. I was doing club shows for 200 bob, 300 bob. I was doing shows for 500, then you go to 1,000, then you go to 5, 10. Pole pole, there are some friends that still do the events for free. There's banter, uh, there's butter and all that. So it is a journey. Then there's always someone expensive than me. There's someone below me. There's someone different levels. At any point in life, there's, there's, there will always be someone above you. There will always be someone below you. There will always be someone who can afford you. And there will always be someone who can't afford you. Someone who can't afford you will go like, Unaringa! But it's like, it's my rate, so I can't do this. But also sometimes, like I said, bills are waiting. So like, yeah, now come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Recently, the last was celebrating his 39th birthday. Let's go now, we could have a studio. And of course, we're Kenya. Each and every time we have something to say, and they were like, hey, every time the last one is 100, Obina is scared, and you behave. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a dog, you know. Uh, is it true that you have to go every time you see the last in the studio? Okay, so... Woga is not the way to define it because I've known Jalas for very many years. He's taught me so much. Uh, we've created so many memories. We've made so much money together. We've done so many things together. However, Jalas is my elder. He's my elder brother. He's my boss, he's my friend, but he's my elder. So anytime Jalas pulls up, I have to be below him. Then there's a saying that always says, never ever outshine your master. Never. In no matter what you do. Even when I'm emceeing events, trust me, I am fire. But when Jalas pulls up when you're emceeing with Jalas, I will not be fire. I will be okay, but I will not do as much as I can do because he's my boss, he's my elder, he's my master. He's taught me so much. I've learned so much from him. So I have to go back to that shell to allow him to be. Because it's his moment. Yeah. Now imagine me now working with Jalas, then I want to shine. Why would I want to shine in front of? It's the same way when I go with Jalas anyway. I don't pay no bill. I ain't paying no goddamn. <laughs> when he pulls up, hey, my wallet nicely. I'm like, I'm missing a key too. So it has to be that way. The same way anytime I'm also with Kamene, She's a baby girl. She's the lady. She has to shine. I don't have any business trying to outshine Kamene. We don't. Yeah. And you've seen it with every other person that I'm with. Any other person who's above me, I have to. And any other person who's below me, I always try and pull them. Be next to me. So when, some, when I'm shining, you shine next to me or you reflect. Mm -hmm. You see, or you get some, some of the sparkle. So that's what happens. So I'm okay with how they say I go to my shell. It's okay. By the way, I go to my shell. I I agree. I I ha like, huh? okay they expected what? Mm -hmm. to come and start talking then I'm also there. No 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 no. Okay. It's never happening. Of Kamene, uh, recently you guys opened a YouTube channel that is a, a joint mli open your YouTube channel Mkiwa Pamoja. Uh, there are some people who felt like, hey, Obina, you're forcing, the chemistry is not real, you're just trying to be like Jalas. Yani, we'd like to know, Ilifika Jadim Kamwa, let's open a YouTube channel together. And what's the plan with the YouTube channel? Okay, so first of all, I'm not trying to fit into Jalango's shoes. I'm not trying to be like Jalango. I'm not trying to replace Jalango in Kamene's life. They have a special bond. They have their friendship. I also have my friendship with Kamene over the years. So anything I do... I don't like it when people try and compare me to Jalango. I'm not his equal. He's above me. Anytime you say, you're not trying to be like Jalango. I'm not trying. I, I do very different things with what he does. There might be similarities here and there, but we're very different individuals, okay? Jalango and Kamene never had a YouTube channel, okay? Jalango and Alex did because of the chemistry and whatever and the agenda they were selling. Myself and Kamene, we have a lot of moments that are normally not recorded. Off air, off radio, when you're just hanging out. The person who capitalized on that was Tumbili. Yeah. So, I sat down and I'm like, wait a minute. This brother is making a lot of... <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, everything we do, so Tumbili can still shoot his, but whatever I'm doing with Kamene on the side can be an extra. It's an extra revenue source. Yes. It's not even about us trying to force anything. It's just about us, whatever we're doing. I've gone to visit her, I'll record, I'll put it there. We've done anything. Then I, I thought again, I'm like, okay, so apart from just us sharing what we do, what else can we add? I am big on charity, even though I always like to do them incognito because how I was raised, I was taught, what this hand gives, this hand should never know. Yeah. However, 
in Kenya, if you do that, people think you don't give. Yeah. If you don't announce, they're like, ah, oh, da, 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 da. so you have to announce to them. So I said, okay, the other way that I will do was, let's give a couple of things on the YouTube channel. So anytime we do a video, we give away something. We have so much to give, so much to share. Let's give shoes, clothes, books. Let's pay school fees. Let's pay hospital bill. Let's do whatever. So that's what the channel is about. The channel is more of a charity channel than us. But when you come to watch us and enjoy what we're doing and have a laughter or something, you see us outside the studio, you get an extra something. We are not trying to fit into anybody. We are not trying to force anything. Trust me, I've not come in here for so long. Like, she's been my boy forever. It's not like we're meeting now. And the thing that people need to understand, I'm not trying to be jealous. I don't want to be jealous. I want his work ethic. I want his discipline. I want his aggressiveness. I want his morals. I want his hard work and all that. But I'm not trying to be, you know. Okay. The other day you launched a show in a to our toxic boyfriend. Yes. Na of late pe imekuwa na vitu vile imelaunchiwa tu hivi imeanza kuleta stories in a trend. Kusu eh kwanza nijue tu ni nini ilifanya ulaunchiwa show and then kuna story pia ambayo umefanya ambayo inazungumziwa sana. the miracle babies baby mama inasemekana kwamba she was lying. Did you have ulichukua time kuangalia kuangalia authenticity ya Kenya alikuwa anakuambia? Okay. Let's talk about the show kwanza. Okay. Let's let that trailer move a bit. Doesn't also want to move. Ah, yeah. So we go. Okay, cool. So, Toxic Boyfriends is only on episode two. Yeah. And guys already crying. Trust me, I've shot ten episodes. And, where's my phone? I could have shown you. I have 15 other DMs that are fire. Others are, ha, ha, ha. Others are fire that people have DM that they want to talk about. So the show is not about exposing deadbeat dads. That was going to happen on Baby Mama Drama, which is also another show that I wanted to launch. However, I have so much that I'm doing on the channel. So I'm even thinking of opening another YouTube channel for it, separate, okay? Because you find like Monday I have Kula Kula Show. On Wednesday, we have Taxi Problems. On Friday, we have First Time. Now, on Thursday, we have Toxic uh, Boyfriends. Then now, there's uh, Boys for Boys, which is supposed to come probably on Sunday or on Tuesday, where now boys are now supporting boys because a lot of boys are dying from depression. They have stress and all that. So there's a, there's a show that's for that. We've already shot like six episodes. I want to shoot one season, then I start airing. Then we have Ogaubina Live. We have so much that I'm doing on the platform because... I realized that, oh, guys are traveling to Dubois. <laughs> All right. So there's a lot that I'm doing on the channel. So Toxic Boyfriends is just one of them. But the idea of the show is not to expose anybody. Okay. Toxic Boyfriends is about situations that people have been through with toxic partners. I could not call it Toxic Partners because that name is just, eh. Then Toxic Girlfriends, the ladies will come for me. They'll be like, oh. So I'm a boy. So it's easy for me to attack myself and go like, yeah, we are toxic boyfriends. So, however, I can talk about ladies, I can talk about men, I can talk about uh, any other situation in a toxic relationship, okay? In the show, you can have men. I can have men. So we'll just say these toxic boyfriends, but this episode, we want to talk about his toxic girlfriend. The idea of when people are vulnerable to talk is when they're drinking. We know men. Mm -hmm. The time we can talk is on a bar. We sit there, you drink, you're like, hey, bro, hey, little mama, man. Then you start talking. So we introduce the idea we need to shoot it in a bar. That, hence, we have the drinks. So there's like a drink there, nini, nini, that someone is having. Where focus with the light. See this one. Who are you lighting that side? I'm here. The dark one is here. This is light skin, light skin. Focus. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have the drinks. So that when you're drinking or when you're having your drink, we can converse and have a conversation. Because I can't just come and just talk to you. I'm not interviewing you. What, okay. people happen, what happens there is people are giving closure. They're sharing what they've been through. Don't you think it's wrong to actually sh uh, interview someone when they are drunk? No, no, no. They are not drunk. Uh -huh. I didn't say, uh -huh. Tunakulewesha. Uh -huh. 
I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. It's, it's, it's a conversation that yeah, I, I, will, yeah, yeah. I will say a lot of things yeah. that people will misinterpret. <laughs> but remember, yeah. above all, I'm a comedian. So yes, I will talk, I will say whatever. Then when someone comes, so the idea was we're going to have wine. Mm -hmm. But how when she came, I was like, you want wine? She's like, no, 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 I want gin. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got gin. I opened it. We put it for her. She had the gin. Yeah. That shoot was 10 minutes. 10, I think 15 but during that time, someone cannot get really drunk. And yeah. then you're having a glass. Then I was even measuring. If you can see, yeah. I was measuring. Yeah. Because I've been trained. We don't just pour alcohol, guess what? You have to measure the level, okay? So we had the conversation. And what happens with this, with the guest, is this on toxic boyfriends? I never ask you the whole story. I ask you for the headline. So I'm like, okay, so what's your story? It's like, hey, Mimi Wangwa Lini Piga. Nika and Aosi, I'm like, it's sour. Let's do that. I don't want to hear the whole story because if I hear the whole story, my reaction will not be genuine. Yes. I'll be like, or I'll start preempting you. Abu, tell me about that time he did. Mm. So like how when she came, I didn't know her. I've never met her before. I don't know any, any information about uh, Miracle Baby. I know they had a situation with uh, their manager and that. And they do good songs. So she came, I was like, okay, cool. So we're going to talk about, I was like, oh, mine is not helping me support my child. I even remember telling her, uh, that one would be ideal for baby mama drama. However, since you're already here, let's try and talk about it. We started talking. She started talking. Everything flew. She said the guy, I even called, I've not watched the yeah, episode though, called, but I called, called I called Chalkido, yeah. yeah. So, so because I have Chalkido's yeah. number. Yeah. So I was like, yo, bro, because I checked, I didn't have his number. So I called Shalkido. I'm like, give me Nani's number. He didn't want to give me. He said he would send. He never sent it. Because I wanted to call him there. I'm like, bro, what's happening? Let's try and... So that's the way it happened. So every other thing that happened after, semantics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what did you do to make sure that his story So I'm not a So I'm not an investigative journalist. You understand? Yes. I don't... I'm not Muhammad Ali. So, sir, we went and go to prison at Ali. We also asked Ali. Da, da, da. That, like I've told you, that one is on baby mama drama. So, baby mama drama is like this. She says, she has your baby, you're not taking care of the baby. I look for you. You say, you are side of the story. Then I bring the two of you. I'm like, cool. So, there's a baby involved. So, what do we do? Do we do DNA? If you refuse, that means you know why you're refusing. You say, yes, I do the DNA. I pay for the DNA. The results come, yes, the baby is yours. So are you going to man up? Yes, what are you going to do? I'm going to do ABCD. We write them down. We have a lawyer or we go to children's court. So you man up and do whatever. The same way to the, to the lady. She doesn't allow you to see your children. I look for her, she says, why? I look for you, you say, why? We meet up and say why she's not doing it and how we can solve it. Baby Mama Drama is about solving the drama that children have because they have toxic parents. Okay, and why are you uh, passionate about Kutetea Watoto Hakizawa Wazipate? Yeah. I've had my fair share of baby mama drama. I have four kids. I have three baby mamas. Trust me, it's never been smooth. It's not smooth and it's never going to be smooth. I just try and manage as much as I can. And also I try to keep all the drama I have away from social media as possible. So I don't think there's going to be a time where you'll ever see a situation that I've spoken about. It might happen, things might happen, but I'll never come out and talk and say, this baby mama is doing this baby mama. No, 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 no. no. My focus normally is about the children. I want to be in the life of my children as much as possible. They are my friends. I want to have fun with them. I want to create memories with them. And I don't want anybody to hinder me from being in their lives. Because I was raised differently. I had situations with my dad. And when I look at all that situation that I had with my dad, I don't want that situation to be with my kids. So I try to be their friends. So anytime I see a friend or a male figure was a child trying to ignore the child neglect the child i'm like yo bro what are you doing you already had the unprotected you know yeah. man up take care and when i see any baby mamas refusing for the baby daddies to see their children trust me my dm is blowing we have a lot of people who are suffering in either toxic relationships that they're physically assault, uh, assaulted mentally emotionally and then also we have a lot of deadbeat fathers we have a lot of Mothers who are bitter, so they don't allow their father, their, their baby daddies to see their children. So it's like, you just send me money, but you can't see your child. So why am I just sending you money and I can't just see my child? So it's, it's complicated. We are hurting. 
And then I see a lot of young people making the same mistakes that I did. Mm -hmm. So my firstborn... Yeah, okay. Is that the reason you uh, always advocate for young people not to get married early, not to get killed when they are yet 27? Yes. yes. So, I got my firstborn when I was 20. My firstborn is 11 now. This was the first... <laughs> Yeah, so I, I was like, yo, what is this? What are those? Like, oh my God. So by in the middle of, oh my God. Whoo. Yeah, so everything happens. So <laughs> and then boom, boy pull up. So I, I love children because even how I met the mother was through the sister. I loved the sister first. Then I, introdu I was introduced to the mother. And then now after that, we started developing a relationship then later when I got an office messenger job then I was like I'm bowling and this experience was woo before I knew it boom I was 20 okay then after that my second born happened then my third born then now my last born then I look at if I had information that I have now then probably I would not have a child yet because I would want them to come in an environment where everything is sorted. Like when my firstborn came, I was jobless. He went, he was delivered in Russia and Kisumu. You know, I didn't know. Then I was not in his life because when he went back to the village, the mother was like, oh, I'm suffering. I can't have Uji, you know, Juicy Amaindi. Da, da, da. She came back to Nairobi and that's what happened. Then my second born, my, my daughter, I was also not there for her when she was being born and everything. I would see her. You know, I was also trying to get, make ends meet, nini, nini. then my third born. So I've learned so much over the time that every other person from my PA to my bro to my friends, I always tell them, bro, when you decide to have a child, be sure you have money to take care of that child. They did not write any letter for you to write them. They did not want an invitation. You were having fun. You were enjoying whatever you are doing. You knew what was happening. And then you got pregnant or you impregnated somebody. The child is here now, so you just take care of the child. But now, to avoid all that, all this drama and the fights that people have, just don't have a child before you're ready. It's a very simple thing. So that's why I'm normally very passionate. I, I don't like seeing children suffer. There's an orphanage that I support in Mwiki. It's called Blessed Assurance Orphanage. That lady raises 75 children on her own. They don't have beddings, they don't have work. We've been trying to get a couple of things. Every year I go there, I support a couple of children there, so I have a couple of children, uh, children there that I've sponsored. But when I look at them, they are so innocent, they don't deserve that. Then someone is just sleeping or just having your drinks. And then you just know there's just some child somewhere who's probably sleeping hungry and you are responsible. I'm just like, it annoys me to the core. I always feel like punching someone in the face. Mm -hmm. But what can we do? So anytime I talk to people, they're like, don't tell us what to do. I'm like, it's okay. Experience is the best teacher. Yeah. Go do it. Yeah. Yes, with, we'll remember these words. With all that intelligence, yes. with all uh, you know, those amazing words, kuna jamaa aliamua leo kuita idiot. Who that? Kibe. Wow. Tunajuana kwa vilemba. I need you recognize as another. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, uh, I chose, I think today was the last day that I had a petty fight. So this is the way, you know me, I'm from the streets. Me, I was a street boy. So when you want to get dirty, I take you to the gutter. I'm always like, yo, I don't take no prisoners. You talk smack, I talk smack back. You want to fight, pull up. So the problem is, a lot of people that will fight you or will talk bad are normally below you. Most of the time. Okay? So like Kibe, he's below me. There's nothing that Kibe has that I don't have tenfold. There's nothing he has better than me. Probably YouTube subscribers because a lot of people like pettiness and insults because creativity, zero. All he does is insult people. Uh, his face, he's uglier than I am. You see? Uh, he's old. He's older than I am. He's not achieved anything. He, he, he was fired a couple of times. He has so many debts. He has, I think, the child molesting situation that was happening, that was being said. I don't know how true that is. If it's true, it's a shame. So there's nothing that he's accomplished that I have not. And I'm probably half his age. So he's feeling threatened. He's feeling scared. So it is okay. If insulting me will make him sleep well. Imagine nowadays, uh, I see them, I laugh. Sometimes I want to comment their fire emojis. I'm like, yo, 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 yo. 
there's also a video you posted of yeah. you getting textbooks for your kids yeah. and he also talked about it akasema you know you're a man you're not supposed to be talking about such things they are the things that you're supposed to be doing uh, they always say my people perish for lack of knowledge so sometimes when when you when you don't read or when you don't pay attention <clears throat> you interpret things according to how you how dumb you are not how you want it's, me, it's stupidity it's like when i normally write like a long paragraph for someone to read then someone comes and comments down there so first of all i know we are not on the same mental space because i've written it for your benefit i rarely go out and insult people I would write something that when you read with an open mind you will understand. When I was doing shopping for the kids back to school, I shared the videos so other people who are planning to have children know that children are expensive. Yes. That was the idea. I was not saying, "Yo, oh, you know about books, so clap for me." Bro, my son is 11. Where were you? Nobody clapped for me, and I don't want you to clap for me. It's my responsibility as their father. I'm doing the bare minimum of taking care of them but i was sharing so someone can learn i was not sharing so that i can flow or anything like that however someone chooses to interpret it is the same way the same situation that happened with uh what's that lady's name uh B miracle babies uh, that that lady so she did not read my my whatever to understand she read it from a from a point of view where she was, yeah, all her defenses were up. It's like I'm throwing, I was not throwing blows. I can't fight with her. She's not in my level. Not mentally, not physically, not emotionally. We're different. See? So I can't insult her. I can't fight with her. She's like a child to me. I need to nurture her. I need to mentor. That's why when I wrote the things I said, however your boyfriend is treating their ex is how they might treat you. When you become, you will become the ex definitely. Nothing lasts forever. You definitely will become the ex. Yes. yes. So, pay attention to. So, when she read it and she decided to insult me and told me I become a women rep, it's okay. I understood. She's hurting. She's coming from a point of view where she's trying to hold on to the guy so the guy doesn't go. But the guy also does not talk. So, either she's cleared the guy, Ama, she's holding something over the guy, Ama, that's the way the guy is. But the way the guy sings and all that noise, he should translate onto how he talks. So there's nothing much I can do about it. The guy is unreachable and the lady is doing all the talking. I can't start fighting with the lady. I don't... Now me, I fight with women. What, what are we fighting for? Me, I just said, if the guy thinks the child is not his, let's do a DNA. I will pay for the DNA. And then he figures out a way to be in the child's life. Don't see it. Oh, this lady is not in the street. Oh, this lady has made her nails. This lady has made her hair. So she's supposed to look like a street urchin, so mm -hmm. that you think she's suffering. Mm -hmm. You posted today, you said that she, you posted a <coughs> screenshot that was showing she texted you, actually. Yeah. Uh, have you talked, or maybe you would like to know, yeah. No, she, she DM'd me, she DM'd me, but I have not responded, and I will not respond, because what do I have to tell her? What am I telling her? Then why was she DMing me? You've already insulted me, so let it be like that. We are not friends. Mm -hmm. I would rather Peter should reach out and we find a way to link Peter with the baby mom. We find out if the child is his or is not his, then he mans up as a friend of mine, as someone in the industry that other people look up to. I don't have any business talking to that lady. We have nothing to discuss. She's not my friend, she's not my mate, she's not my fan, nothing. So I'll not respond. Wow. Thank you very much. But uh, after Apple, we have a claret lounge. Yes. Asubui to Nakutana Kiss 100 is coming in Obina. Yes. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Much appreciated. Yes. And also, by the way, go to Obina YouTube channel. That's Obina TV. The episode for toxic boyfriends that landing on Thursday. You you're not ready. You know nothing. You wait for this one. This Friday. This Thursday. Ha. And then also the Kula Kula that's landing on Monday. And then taxi. Okay, you go to Obina TV. Yeah, when, when are you doing my kula kula? Oh, see you, you are fungu. When you fungu? To me fungu at Leo. Oh, me fungu at Leo. <laughs> 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 this week. <laughs> Thank you very much, Abina.